Hello my beautiful babes, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Boss of Budgets. On this channel, I do cash stuffing, budgeting, and saving up challenges and all things money related. In today's case, we are going to be doing something different. First time ever showing you guys my debt journey and I'm so so excited. This is a long video coming. I know some of you guys have been waiting for it and thank you so much for waiting this long. I, I love to promise and here we are delivering it so we are definitely gonna be you know intimate this is something that i hold very dear to me of course i don't go around telling everyone that i'm in debt or i have you know consumer debt but i wanted to share you guys with my journey because i, I want to motivate you guys and inspire you guys to you know get on the path of becoming debt free and just becoming more financially stable and secure in your life Money Money is seriously one of the leading stressors in life and just making sure that you have it under control I think it really does help maintain your anxiety and your stress so that's what I am here to promote today let's jump right in so today is March 17 and I realized you guys might not see this so let me actually go get a sharpie instead all right so let me write that over March 17, 2023. Honestly, I find it really difficult to write with my long acrylic, so forgive my penmanship, you guys. It's not normally like this, but I wanted to explain the three credit cards that I have. So I have American Express, I have Discover, and I have Capital One. This is my second time actually opening a Capital One. When I was younger, I think my first credit card was actually in Capital One. I just turned 18 and I opened it for myself. Then a couple years down the line, I actually opened a Discover credit card and that was because at the time, Discover had like a really good deal for cash back and I think that they still have it, which is a 5% cash back on selected categories throughout the year. And then finally, I actually applied for an Amex. I think in 2019, I applied for it so I can go to Vegas. I know, stupid idea, but I actually racked up quite a bit of money on it and I finally finally got that under control and meanwhile i'm working on these two credit cards my original capital one did close and as you guys know if you close your credit card or the credit card company closes your account it's going to hurt your credit score and so i didn't realize that until i had tried to log back into my capital one and saw that it had closed my account due to inactivity i ended up opening another capital one account just because it had a really good um i think it was a really good intro deal so i had like i think it was a 200 dollars signing deal if i spent a certain amount in a couple of months i ended up doing that and then it was also zero interest for the first I think it's 15 months of opening the card so there you have it I have these three accounts and then Kia is actually my car note I bought a Kia Optima plug-in so I have a hybrid car it runs on both electricity and gas and then ortho is my orthodontics so I pay monthly to the company for this and then finally my CSU loan which is my student loan from when I got my bachelor's degree at a university so let's go ahead and and start with Amex after you know that whole thing about using all of my credit for a Vegas trip in 2019 maybe I had like a balance of $10,000 with a max utilization for that card but i managed to pay that down so now i am at 67 dollars only for this account this 67 dollars if you notice is actually my subscriptions every month i do deposit whatever i stuff for my subscription and i pay this off but just to dive in my interest rate for this is 15.99 percent my minimum payment this month would be 35 however i am going to pay the full balance because that's something that I always budget for. So my interest charge has always been $0 since I started budgeting. I am obviously going to pay it by the end of this um, month, which is March 31st. And there is no weekly payment because obviously I am going to be paying it off. And then let's move on to my Discover account. So this at one point was maxed out to... I think my um, credit limit is like 5000 on this or something around there. So anyways, I owe about $5.93. My interest rate, I have to search it up, but I am 
about 18.99%. My minimum payment this month will be at $5.93. I will just have to pay off that. No interest charge and this is obviously going to be paid off by March 31st and then no weekly payments. Now this is definitely the one we need to focus on. Capital One, I have $6,929.18, you guys. I know. I know. I don't know how that happened, but it did. So we're going to address it. Interest is pretty high for this one compared to the other ones. It's 20.45. My minimum payment every month is always around $95 given that I'm I'm at a pretty high amount right now. I don't have any interest charge thankfully because, you know, I'm still in that intro of 15 months and I actually did my calculations for, you know, paying this amount off and it's more complex than just going straight forward like this. Um there's a lot of other consumer debt that I have within this that I've broken down but in general um, I will be able to pay it off by May 1st basically I have a four-week schedule with this and my weekly payment for this would actually be 317 this actually will only equal up to like a thousand something and that's because this is kind of broken down into different bits and pieces throughout my binder so that's pretty much the weekly payment that I'm gonna have to do and then I want to go into my Kia I actually $16,682.34 left. My interest rate when I got my car was 5.59. The minimum payment every month is 349 as you guys recognize in my binder. The interest charge, it does go down bit by bit every month, but last month it was around $78.45. I have a payment plan actually put in place for this that I'm going to try to hold myself accountable to get it paid by December 31st. I actually want to pay off my entire car note by December 31st. You know, at a certain point, I, I can't remember when, I think it's when I complete my Capital One debt, I'm going to start paying this off and every week I will have to pay $400 seven dollars on top of the 349 dollars of minimum payment to get to sixteen thousand dollars at the end of the year quite a bit i know i know i had talked to you guys earlier this year and said that i wanted to increase my house fund i wanted to focus on it but then i realized i don't want to keep paying every month for this interest if you times this out by 12 you know months a year we have Let's see, 78 times 12. I'm paying almost $1,000 every month just so that I can, you know, lag it out. And I think that $1,000 next year is gonna go into something more useful. For example, I still have to pay $4,288 into my ortho. That $1,000 by the end of the year could have paid off that. So that's why I'm going this route instead of accumulating more savings. Last year was all about building up my savings, building up my emergency funds, things like that. And I put myself in a great position so that this year I can focus solely on debt. I wouldn't advise focusing solely on debt if you don't have an emergency fund, just in case what happens if you lose your job, God forbid, or something happens where you can't continue getting the income that you have. That means you're not going to have any physical cash on hand to pay off your credit card or to pay for expenses, right? Keep stacking up on your credit card. That's why I still think that having your savings savings is really good prior to just putting 100% focus into your debt. Given that I have, you know, quite a bit of money in my emergency fund and quite a bit of money in my house fund already, I feel like I'm in a good spot right now to just focus 100% on debt just so that when I start you know, my process of buying a house, I have all of that in order. Like I'm not, you know, completely in debt. I still have room for the mortgage payment and things like that. So Ortho actually has 0% because um, that's kind of like the deal or the contract that I have with my Ortho provider. And then minimum payment per month is actually $214. Obviously no interest charge. I have decided that I am going to hold off on paying this in 
full because zero interest. So I believe I will be able to pay that off in quarter three of 2024. And there is no weekly payment on top of this because that's just my monthly payment. Finally, we have my student loan, which is at $5,500. Right now, interest rate is still zero. You know, there's still a debate about the student loan going in Congress right now. So there hasn't been final decision about that, unfortunate. So I am with the mindset of having to save up this money right now. No minimum payment as of right now. I think they said that they were going to resume sometime in quarter three of this year. No interest charge of right now. And then I'm anticipating on saving up this money and I should have enough saved in quarter two of 2024. No weekly payments as of right now. Actually, I will have $53 of weekly payment sometime in quarter three or quarter four. That's going to probably bring me around like one5 K by the time 2024 hits and then you know in 2024 I'm gonna focus on ortho and then I'm gonna focus on paying off my student loan hopefully that breakdown makes sense to you guys I know it's quite a bit of money I think maybe when you break it down maybe it doesn't look that much but to me it's it's quite a bit of money that I've consumed and obviously this is debt by my own will by my option I decided you know these are things that I wanted to invest in myself um, so yeah that's how we got to where we are now when we add it all up this is kind of when it gets crazy so I actually owe $33,472.45 quite 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 a bit this could have been something that was going to be put into my house fund for this year and then the beginning of next year but you know it is what it is um this is where we are right now that's why i am considering getting a second job again my contract has ended I think about three and a half months now and I think I'm ready to be able to get a second job I just think it was easier to handle a lot of this debt and I did really knock down a lot of things when I did have a second job so yeah now I'm kind of like just just scanning the market seeing what I I see I do have an interview tomorrow at a high-end um, restaurant I do have restaurant experience as you guys know I was a manager for quite a bit of time I have like about eight years of hospitality experience on Yelp it's like four dollar signs so it's very high end and it's actually a japanese restaurant and i do have experience in um working at a japanese slash hawaiian cuisine thank you guys for listening i don't know if i am gonna be doing this often but let me know what you guys think i've seen people do like monthly debt updates and things like that if you guys want to know the progress please let me know i would be interested in you know doing that with you guys of course we are here for learning and i love sharing with you guys what i can so yeah thank you guys so much for watching this far and i hope you guys have a great rest of your day or your night i'll see you guys next time ta-ta for now